If you ask me why Hunter Bryant went undrafted in the 2020 NFL Draft, I tell you that there's a mix of bad decisions and a mix of bad luck. Now, when I say bad decisions, I don't mean he was on trial for felony charges like Quintez Cephas or allegedly robbed someone like DeAndre Baker. No, no, no. In fact, the decisions Hunter made aren't particularly that bad at all. Just maybe not the best. Of course, though, this all is in hindsight. Maybe choosing to stay in his home state of Washington over powerhouse schools like Oklahoma and Auburn didn't help his draft stock. Don't get me wrong, Jacob Eason wasn't a bad quarterback, but the position as a whole has been in flux with no blue chip talent in Washington. Not only could Bryant have played with Jalen Hurts, he could have caught passes from Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield as well, which would have ensured him at least a top seven draft spot, right? Or maybe after setting school records as a junior and playing a full season for the first time, maybe Bryant should have gone back to Washington and gave his GMs a stellar year, showcasing his talents and his health. I mean, that surely would have assured him a draft spot, right? Well, we'll never know. Because in fact, Hunter Bryant did decide to stay in Washington. And Hunter did miss significant time in his first two seasons due to knee injuries before opting out as a junior and declaring for the NFL draft. Bad choices or bad luck? With the coronavirus pandemic taking the United States by storm, teams weren't able to properly get medical checks on players. One such player being Hunter. I mean, just imagine being 100% healthy and ready to go and not to be drafted because doctors are too scared to come give you a checkup. <laughs> That's the situation Hunter Bryant found himself in before the Detroit Lions gave him a call and ultimately offered him a contract. But how did such a talented player that literally all scouts had in their top five of tight ends, most of which had him as a TE1 or tight end two, go from four-star freak athlete to one full season and undrafted. This is the story of Hunter Bryant. It has always been Hunter Bryant's dream to play in the NFL. So much so that when Hunter Bryant was five, he started watching film. He says, quote, I remember I would always watch my games after I played because my mom would always film it. Brian told the Seattle Times, I'd look at things I could have done differently and ways I could have improved my game. So that's always been something I did. In the almost 20 years since, it has made Hunter somewhat an expert on self-evaluation. He says, watching yourself, especially at a young age, sets you apart. And the numbers back his statements. Bryant was named to the Max Prep All-America Second Team, Medium Size School, All-America Second Team, and USA Today All-State on all levels following his senior year. Also, Seattle Times All-State and Metro League Mountain Division Offensive Co-MVP. And was invited to participate in the Polynesian Bowl where he played with future NFL draft picks Tua Tonga Valoya and AJ Epinesa. Whatever. Over his career at Eastside Catholic High School in Seattle, Washington, Bryant caught 138 passes for 2,483 yards and 35 touchdowns. He helped the Crusaders to an 11 2 record as a senior. Caught 56 catches for 979 yards and 10 get touchdowns in nine games as a senior. As a junior, he helped Eastside to a perfect 13-0 record and to the 3A state championship. Was named to the USA Today All-State team, all team as a junior and caught 48 passes for 1,137 yards and 17 touchdowns as a junior, including two touchdown receptions in the state title game. Averaging 23.7 yards per catch in 2015. Team went 13-2 and won a 3-8 state title his sophomore year, where he added on 34 catches for 347 yards and 8 touchdowns. 
He played in the Polynesian Bowl following his senior year, was Prep Star All-America, one of just five members of the class named to the Seattle Times Blue Chip Recruit, one of seven players named to a Northwest Nugget by the Tacoma News Tribune, and also named to the News Tribune's Western 100. Listed as the number 73 overall prospect and number two tight end in the nation by Scout.com. Rated number three in the state and the number five in and number 189 on overall prospects in the nations by 27sports.com and rivals.com. Ranked them number two recruit in Washington, the number four tight end in the country, and the nation's number 141 overall recruit. ESPN listed them at 263 overall in the nation and number four in the state, as well as the number four tight end in America. With all the recognition and accolades, Hunter was quickly becoming a star in his hometown. He's on the radio. He's winning championships. His family's proud. But now, he's hot on the recruiting trail. Austin Safari Jenkins is making the splash on the NFL level as a Washington product. And coaches are selling to Bryant that he can walk in those footsteps in the league. Brian is so enamored with the local fame and staying close to his family, he commits to the University of Washington without even taking a single visit to another school. Again, bad choices. Not wrong, but definitely not right. <clears throat> Looking back at it, Hunter could have signed with Auburn and played with Jared Stidham, or maybe Oregon and played with Justin Herbert. Already told you about him snubbing Oklahoma and all those Heisman quarterbacks he could have caught passes from. He even turned down Penn State, a nice program that runs a pro-style offense. But the choice was his, and his family was ecstatic that their young superstar had decided to stay home so they could continue to watch him. And so after his senior year in the Polynesian Bowl, he took the short drive to Washington's campus and was ready to start his journey as a student athlete for the Huskies. As a freshman at Washington University, Hunter Bryant played in nine games, starting five. Despite missing the last four games of the regular season due to injury, he still finished the season with third most receptions of any Husky. He saw action in Washington's season opening win at Rutgers, catching one pass for four yards, caught a 10-yard pass in the win over Montana, earned a start against Fresno State where he caught three passes for 99 yards, Two receptions for 12 yards in a start at Colorado and three for 57 in a start versus Oregon State. Picked up nine catches for 121 yards and a touchdown in the Huskies' win over California as a true freshman. Two catches for 11 yards in the Arizona State game and a 17 restart reception in the win over UCLA. He was the co-winner of the Travis Spring Outstanding Freshman Award at the UW's Postseason Banquet. But this was no time to celebrate for Brian. He had to rehab and fast, so he was ready to come out again as a sophomore. Hunter Bryant foresaw noticeable growth as a tight end in year two. Brian admitted that he needed to get better in every aspect of the game heading into his sophomore season. He was quoted saying that his route running Blocking, power, and speed was everything that he needed to work on. He said on practice at a spring in, on Monday to 2 7 Sports Kim Grenolds. And the hard work will be immediately put to the test. In 2018, Hunter only played in five games. He sat out the entire first half of the season or first nine games of the season due to an all season injury but returned to action in the win over Stanford. He caught one pass for nine yards versus the Cardinal, caught two passes for 55 yards in the Husky win over Oregon State, and then three catches for 108 yards in the Apple Cup win at WSU. When he had one catch for 59 yards, as well as a 22-yard touchdown reception, had one catch for 15 yards in the Pac-12 championship game win over Utah. Four receptions for 51 yards against Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. He balled out when he had the opportunity, but at the end of the year, Hunter was beyond disappointed at the start to his college career and vowed to himself that all would change his junior season. 
In an interview with the Seattle Times, Brian told a reporter that it's funny looking back at my old film, he said, because I still watch old freshman film just to see what I was doing back then. Just watching it now is basically two completely different players. With everything I have in my bag that I can do, going from now to then, it's a huge difference and it's a lot of fun. He said, I feel even better, bigger, stronger, faster, he said with a gritty grin. So I'm really excited to see what I'm going to be able to do and what this team's going to be able to do. He just had to stay healthy. And that he did. Hunter Bryant finished the season with 85 career receptions for 1,394 yards, the fourth and the second most respectively by a tight end in UW history. His 52 catches in 2019 were second most in UW single season history by a tight end, while 825 receiving yards was just 25 short of the UW tight end record. He was named to the preseason All-Pac-12 second team, one of three finalists for the Mackey Award, played in all 12 games, but he sat out the bowl game, starting 11 of those 12, all except Hawaii. Started versus Eastern Washington, finishing with a team high, six catches for 81 yards, four catches for 40 versus Cal, five for 115, including a 47-yard touchdown on the third play of the game in the Huskies' win over Hawaii. Named the UW Coaches Offensive Player of that game after that victory. Four catches for 49 yards in that win at BYU. Four catches for 49 yards in the USC game. And one catch at Stanford. Three for 45 in the UW win at Arizona. Three for 65 versus Oregon. Six for 105 and two touchdowns versus Utah. And two touchdowns versus the Utes were 34 and 40 yards. Big playability. Had 5 for 90 in the win at Oregon State, 5 for 82 in the win, uh, at Colorado, and 6 for 96 yards in the Apple Cup win over Washington State. Got him named UW's most outstanding offensive player at the season postseason awards banquet. Again, Bryant was back in the spotlight and was feeling that stardom again. But just like the first time, more poor choices would follow. First being, Bryant sat out of Washington's bowl game to preserve his body to the pros and ultimately declared for the NFL draft as a junior. Scouts saw how explosive he was, and in a weak tight end class, he was hoping his pass-catching ability could land him a second-round pick now. He chose to bet on himself. Little did he know, he would be choosing wrong. Hunter Bryant knew that a knock on himself would be that he wasn't a blocker. So in a last chance attempt to impress scouts, he decided to put on 28 pounds right before the NFL combine. And while Bryant was looking jacked and even had an impressive showing on the bench, Go all the way up, lock out, lock out. Come on, lock out, don't bounce, warning, lock him out, lock him out, all the way up. can't help but think he made the wrong bet. Instead of sharpening his route running skills and improving on his strengths, Bryant did a complete 180 and went with the power showcase. And while it landed him 23 reps on the bench, it severely hurt his 40 yard dash time. His whole life Bryant had been a low 4-6 slash 4-5 guy, but the extra pounds he picked up costed him his speed, and at 6'2", 248 pounds, Bryant ran a 4-7 40-yard dash, leaving scouts severely unimpressed. So not only did Bryant run a less than impressive 40-yard dash, but COVID-19 happened. NFL teams had no idea about the true extent of his medical history 
or if he sat out the final game due to a new injury and took notice as they shaped their draft board. Seven rounds went by and no team chose Hunter. Bob Quinn and Detroit had been playing close attention to his situation, and when they saw he was single, they quickly added him to the roster, hoping to nab the steal with the NFL draft. Bryant had a tough road ahead of himself to make the 53-man roster in Detroit, but after top pick TJ Hawkinson, there is an opening for playmakers. While Nada and Jesse James are still on the roster, neither of them made the plays last season that tight end Logan Thomas was able to make in the passing game. And with Thomas out, I have to assume that that spot is still up for grabs via competition. Hunter Bryant is almost like Isaiah Simmons on the offensive side of the ball. A freak athlete at 6'2", 250 pounds, he bullies safeties and he runs past linebackers. He's more of a huge slot tight end than he is, I mean a slot receiver than he is a tight end. But he's an extremely competitive player. I really like the addition to the team and just the potential alone. I think as a finished product, when healthy, Hunter Bryant can provide extreme versatility and mix matches on offense. At the very least, on third down in the red zone, he could provide that similar target that Joe Fourier used to bring. Regardless, low risk, very high reward, high upside type player that just had a slip up and a rush of bad circumstances lead him to the undrafted free agent life. But if they can put a chip on his shoulder and maybe, just maybe, he can overcome and one day make plays for an offense in the NFL. Hopefully it's with our offense. So I like to pick up.